Okay, so in this problem, we're told a 3.25 kilogram piece of wood with a specific gravity of 0.5 floats on water. What minimum mass of lead hung from the wood uh, by a string will cause it to sink? So uh, what we have going on here is this wooden plank, and we know we're going to have a piece of lead hanging from it. And so what we're trying to find is the mass of this lead, the minimum value of it, that will cause this whole thing to sink, right? So the wood plank to sink. And so we're given the specific gravity of the wood, which is 0.5. We're also given the mass of the wood, which is uh, 3.25 kilograms. And so, as always, when you do these problems, you're going to want to draw a free body diagram. So, for we have the force due to gravity, right? The weight acting on both the wood and the uh, lead here. So, that's MWG for the wood and then MLG, right? The lead times gravity. And then we're also going to have the buoyancy force acting on both of these. So, you have the buoyancy force for the lead and the buoyancy force uh, for the wood. And so the trick to this problem is you're basically going to set the weight of each of the objects equal to their buoyancy forces. So F, B, W, or sorry, yeah, F, B, W, right? So the buoyancy force of the wood plus the buoyancy force of the lead. And so at this point where they're equal, that's the point, right? Whatever these values are, the lead is going to be the point at which it sinks. Because if they're equal, right, right at that moment is basically where it's stable, and then basically right after that, it'll sink. So basically, you can set these equal, it's going to be the minimum value for which they sink. So uh, yeah, we're going to solve for ML here by using this formula by setting them equal. Uh, obviously, we need to find the buoyancy force uh, for both the wood and the liquid, or sorry, the, the lead. So the formula for the buoyancy force, basically, the buoyancy force is equal to the, the uh, weight of the water displaced. So the formula for it, I'll show you here, is rho times g times v. And so the way this works is, as I said before, it's the weight of the water displaced, so the mass of the water times g. Well, we know mass equals, or sorry, density, which we write by rho, equals mass over volume. Therefore, if we want to solve for the mass, you would just multiply both sides by v. Therefore, we just place this with uh, p or rho and v, and that's how we get this. So uh, we know both of these are going to be equal to mwg plus mlg equals rho gv plus rho gv so keep in mind this is the volume of the wood this is the uh, volume of the lead and then the rho in this formula is the density of the surrounding fluid so in this case it's water so i'm going to write wa wa and then obviously g is just a constant and so now we want to solve for the mass of the lead here uh, notice you have a G in each term, so they can cancel. So you have mass of the wood plus the uh, plus the uh, mass of the lead equals uh, the density of the water times the volume of the wood plus the density of the water times the volume of the lead. And so now what we're going to do is replace the volume, each of these, with their mass and density counterparts. So... Notice density, as I said before, equals mass over volume. Therefore, multiplying both sides by V, dividing by rho, you get volume equals mass over density. And so what we're going to do is replace each of these volumes with that. So we have mass of the water, or sorry, the mass of the wood plus mass of the liquid, or sorry, the lead. I keep getting these confused. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we have the density of the water, and then we're replacing this. So volume equals mass over density so it's the mass of the wood divided by the density of the wood plus or uh, plus the density of the water multiplied by the mass of the lead divided by the density of the lead and so now that we've got it like this what we're going to do is actually go ahead and combine these two terms now how are we going to do that so the way it's going to work is uh, using specific gravity. So the formula for specific gravity is equal to the density of your substance. So in this case, we're going to use wood and lead. So basically, we'll just use write wood here. So wood divided by the density of water. So it's the ratio of the density of uh, your substance to water. So what we can do is replace this with the inverse of your specific gravity. So mw plus ml equals right because notice this right here is just the opposite of this so we can write this as mass of the wood 
divided by the specific gravity of uh, the wood. Right, so all we're doing is replacing this with that. And then we can do the same thing uh, over here. So L would just be replacing the W. So it's basically the mass of the lead divided by the specific gravity of the lead. And so what we're going to do is minus the mass of the wood from this side, right? And then it will minus it from this side. And then we're going to minus the mass of the lead to this side. So minus, so you're minusing from this side, M, L, S, G, L, right? And then minus M, L, S, G, L. So let me show you what you're going to get. You're going to get M, L uh, minus M, L over S, G, L is equal to M, W over S, G, W minus mw and so what we can do now is actually factor out ml from both of these terms so you get ml times one or sorry ml times one minus one over sgl is equal to uh, and then you do the same thing over here so factor out mass of the wood and you'll get one over sgw minus one so all we did was factor out MW and ML from each of these. And then to solve, you would just uh, divide this from both sides. So just divide this and you'll get ML equals M of the wood times one over SGW minus one divided by one minus one over SGL. And so, yeah, this is what we have now. And really it's just a matter of solving. So the mass of the wood is 3.25 multiplied by right one over s uh, the specific gravity of the wood which they tell us the value is 0 0.5 minus one divided by one minus one over uh the specific gr uh specific gravity of lead which you need to know is equal to about 11.3 right you can look that up on the internet if you want it should be in your textbook though but it should be just a known value so 11.3 and then what you want to go ahead and do is uh, just solve for this so you have 1 divided by 0.5 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 11.3 times 3.25 and so you're gonna get 3.56 which is about 3.6 so 3.6 kilograms that's gonna be the mass the minimum value of the mass at which this will sink. So if it's any uh, less than this, it's not going to sink, right? So that's why we set them equal to each other so we could find the value at which they're equal. And that gives us the mass. So if this value is any less, it's not going to sink, right? So, but if it's greater than this, it will sink. So that's why we set them equal to each other there, right? Because you set them equal, those are when their forces are equal. So at this point they will sink, but if it was any less, it wouldn't because the buoyancy force would just be greater. Uh, but yeah, so 3.6, that's gonna go ahead and be your answer. Just a quick rundown we set them equal to each other here and then we just uh basically had to manipulate it in a way to uh get rid of or to get ml by itself and then terms we actually know and uh yeah so hopefully this video made sense i know the terms were kind of confusing uh but hopefully you understood it uh so yeah so 3.6 kgs that's going to go ahead and be your answer and hopefully you found this video useful